Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. This is going to be a great time. We're going to do a couple really beautiful paintings here. This is the Extreme Beginner series. And of course, as we're learning in the Extreme Beginner series, you know, we don't have to go out and spend hundreds, hundreds, you know, thousands of dollars on materials, art materials, and art tools, brushes, all that kind of stuff. If you're just starting out, start out real humble. Get yourself a real simple set. We'll show you what set that is. Actually, I'll just quickly cover that. This is a Prang watercolor set, oval 16. So it's Prang oval 16. It's semi-moist paints. These are really beautiful paints. You just spray them once, two minutes before you're going to paint, and they get moist, and you can do beautiful, gorgeous, rich-looking colors on your paintings, you know, right away. No, no worries. No squeezing tubes of paint or sitting there and waiting for your dried uh, paints to moisten up after you spray them. These are moist, semi-moist paints. They work really great. So for beginners, this is a great kind of paint to use. And again, it only takes you literally 30 seconds to open this up and then you're, you're painting. Now, the second thing is we're going to do two paintings, two beautiful paintings. This is more of like a western, kind of like a scene here, a deserty type looking scene. Um, landscape painting, lots of water, glazing technique. We're going to cover what the glazing technique is and how you can really utilize it to capitalize on your watercolors. It's a real fun technique and a lot of watercolor artists use the glazing technique. Uh, and in my teaching, I'm always teaching you both the glazing technique, and here we use the alla prima method. I teach you both of these all of the time. I mix it up constantly so you learn both, and this way you can use either one or you can mix them together however you see fit. So once you start to paint after six months to a year, you'll, you'll be able to use both methods interchangeably anytime you want. Um, so this first one, just really tons of fun, and we spend most of this uh, tutorial on this painting because it's a little more intensive with the um, lots of water glazing technique. We have to let things dry a couple times. This here, vase of flowers. This is a la prima, and again, we're just going to go in and start painting with the vase, the shadows, and then the flowers, and um, leaf forms, and so, so forth. And then we just, lastly, we add in some little bits of color along the back of the table and the wall behind. So this one goes quicker. It's a little more fun, lighter. We do more work, intensive work on this painting, and then we lighten it up at the end and just do more of a simple painting for ourselves. So let's have fun. Let's get started. And um, again, I want to thank everyone for coming by. Thanks for joining. Thanks for leaving your great comments and letting me know you're starting out in the beginning now, and we're just going to cover everything for you step by step, so this way there's no confusion as you start your watercolor painting, drawing and painting. You're going to have primarily two things to do. One, practice your drawing, and I'll cover that on subsequent videos. I'll be doing drawing videos constantly, so you can just do, draw along with me, and that'll be your drawing time, so we'll do it together, so you don't have to feel like you just, you're out there on your own doing it by yourself. I'll work with you. We'll do it. We'll do it together get our drawings done every week, and then we'll do our uh, paintings also during the week. So as long as we're doing our drawings, and then we're doing our drawings and paintings once a week, on a weekly basis, you'll, you'll pick everything up and you'll just continually progress and get better and better, and your paintings will look much better as you go uh, each week and each month that goes by. Okay, so we'll start in just a second. All right, everybody, we're getting back started here. We just saw the finished paintings. We did two paintings. Now we're just going to kind of reverse engineer everything. So you saw the finished uh, works that we did, the compositions, just now in the beginning of the video. Now we're just going to kind of go over how I did it, you know, part by, you know, piece by piece, part by part. Um, first thing I did was I took some tape, half-inch tape here. So we'll just check it out. We have, yeah, half-inch uh, tape here. So this is a, a good... Um, good quality drafting tape. So drafting tape, artist tape, it, it works great if you can use a good quality tape. This way it, uh, it'll, be, it'll be much more um, less likely to tear, uh, tear up the, the paper fibers along the outside edges for, uh, where you tape. So that's just one thing to remember. Rolls of tape, they last pretty, pretty long. You know, I, I usually buy a roll of tape like this and it lasts me 
maybe six months, I guess, or so. So, but it's a good quality drafting tape goes a long way. One of those things where you kind of have to weigh out the options when you're uh, purchasing your art supplies. Some things you may not need to, you know, invest too much money in things. Other things you want to buy maybe a little more quality because it goes a lot further. So a good um, pro makes really great artist tape. Um, this is the one I use mainly because, again, it's got great um, tackiness properties where it doesn't rip the paper up and it also does a nice job of sealing out the water. And there's other tapes. I find the easiest tape to get, and I use this a lot, is the uh, frog tape. Frog tape. You can get this at any of the big box stores, like the uh, home improvement stores, like Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that. They have tons of this. There's different colors, green, purple, yellow, blue. Some of them have different tackiness levels. So um, some of them are very, very easy on the paper. Some might be a little more tough on your paper. But I think the green and the purple work great. Also, the yellow works really great. So you have to check out and read the labels when you buy your tape at the big box stores. But this goes a long way too. I, you know, this I've had for like a year. So this uh, frog tape works great. Um, so there we go. We have that. And, um, and you can get it in various thicknesses. This is a half inch. I don't know if you can get the frog tape in this thickness though. The artist tape, the pro art tape, drafting tape actually comes in this fine thickness here. Half inch. It also... You can get it in, I think, even like quarter inch. So you can even get thinner than that. You can get quarter inch uh, drafting tape. The uh, the frog tape, I think this is the thick thinnest you can find in the frog tape at the home improvement stores. And that might be fine. You can use this to, to do your borders around your paintings. This should be fine. I'll use this. It looks better on camera. So when I'm making videos for you, I like to make sure I do a great job of doing my videos. I don't want to make things look a little bit unpleasant with uh, colored tape. So I'll use this. So what I'm going to do is just go around the border one time, like so, with the uh, tape. This just gives us a border around the outside edge. And I just tape it as I go. Just right around. This is a 9 by 12 paper. And I'm using the uh, Strathmore. Um, this is a very inexpensive but really, really good quality Strathmore watercolor paper. So I use this for, um, like if you're a beginner, you're just starting out and you don't want to go out and buy the, you know, really expensive watercolor paper, although you should try it once in a while. Just go out and buy maybe one sheet of really, really expensive paper for maybe like $5. Really, really good stuff. Um, you know, you can ask your uh, um, salespeople at the uh, art store, say you want to try a really, really good watercolor paper, but you just want to try one sheet, then you can bring it back to your studio or at home, you can trim it into smaller pieces and you can work on it and you can see the difference. But this is, you know, for beginners, this is great. Strathmore watercolor, it's the yellow, 300 series, and it does a great job. So we'll continue on here and again as beginners, we're extreme beginners now, we're going to just chalk it up to we all have to start at the beginning and in the beginning we don't even know if we're going to continue painting and drawing. We might not like it. Most of you will continue to paint and draw, I'm sure of that. But maybe a few of you might say, you know what, ah, it's not for me, I'm going to try oil painting or pastels or acrylic paintings, you know, acrylic painting. So some of you are going to probably drift off and do some other stuff. That's fine. Charcoals, just ink drawings, maybe whatever. You know, there's all kinds of different art stuff. You can do sculpture. Maybe you just want to do sculpture, maybe and just start working with clay and doing sculpture. Who knows? Or um, ceramics or something. So there's all kinds of great stuff you can do with art. It's not just painting, but here on this channel, we're doing everything watercolor. So, so there we have it. Outside border done. Now we're going to create two sections to this. So then all we do next is um, we can just divide this in half. So this was 12. So we go 6. That's the halfway point. And let me just take, we'll take two pieces of tape. So we'll just go one there. And we'll do another one right next to it. 
and then that gives us the two borders in the center that we need like that. So this way when we peel up this tape it's, it's going to give us a half inch border around all of the paper and then the double wide in the middle is so that we have a half inch border on each of these on both sides. If that makes sense. And we can just draw a pencil line down there so we can kind of see. And then let's do a border around our rectangles like that just so we can kind of see the borders on camera. We're working within this rectangle that's where all the action is within the rectangle so you're working in a rectangle or a square as an artist you're drawing your painting you're really kind of really lucky you're kind of really lucky as an artist you you just have this one area it's not like you're you know having to deal with a, a mile or something or you know a ball field it's you're working in this small area the largest you're going to probably work in is like a you know 24 by 36 inches so Sometimes, yes, you'll get a large piece of paper maybe and work on that, but again, 24 inches by 36 inches, still, you're, you're really focused in on a, a small area, which is really good. So as artists, we're, we're really lucky. We don't have to, it's not like we're create. you know, let's say an architect, they might have to design a, a city or something. So you can imagine they got to deal with miles of <laughs> information. We just have this one small area. So we're lucky, we can focus in on this one area <clears throat> and get all, all of our concentration going right in here. So, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to stop the tape now, take a quick break, because we've been working quite a bit. We did our um, taping methods, how we do our tape around our paper to get a nice clean border. Once we are done painting, we'll lift up this tape. You'll see the beautiful, crisp, beautiful white border around our um, artwork here, our paintings. And then um, once we do that, or once, you know, I'll come back in like five minutes. I'm just going to take a quick break and then we'll get started. We'll do our first drawing and painting and then we'll work on a second. So we'll do two on this uh, series here on this video. And uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. And uh, I always mention before I go right down there on the right hand side, the subscribe button, please consider subscribing to my channel. This way you can get all these videos. They're really important, especially if you're just starting out in watercolor or you've only been in it for maybe six months or a year and you're not sure of a lot of things that um, go on with the watercolor medium. This is what we, what I do every week for you, is I'm going over the same ideas, the techniques, the methods, um, all the information that you'll need as a watercolor artist to continue learning, growing. Um, you'll, your art's gonna get better. You'll find that the more, t the more you tune into my channel and watch my videos, you're gonna learn more because you're hearing the information over and over, and that means you're gonna recall it better. You're gonna memorize it better versus if you just watch one video, you're really not going to learn very much because you'll just hear it once and it's kind of, and if you can take notes when I'm doing my videos, if you can take a few notes, you'll even remember more. So if you start a little notebook or just maybe a little sketch pad and you start writing down some key concepts that we're doing here, again, that'll even lock in this information uh, into your memory uh, much better so that again when you're working and working on your paintings at home in your studio in your kitchen table or your living room wherever you're working outdoors in the backyard or at a park wherever you like to paint and draw and have a great time with your art you're going to remember all these things uh, much more if you're watching on a consistent basis and that's really why I say if you subscribe and you even hit the notification bells you'll be notified exactly when the video a new video that we create comes out and you'll be learning again a lot of new information and the same information too over and over and over which is going to be great you'll remember it a lot better you'll be able to recall it much quicker so when you're you know watercolor is a fast medium <laughs> is it not a fast medium right you put some paint on the paper and next thing you know it's drying up you have to be quick so if you're going to be you, you're working with a quick medium like watercolor you have to have a lot of this stuff committed to memory the uh techniques and methods so that you're never going to be second guessing what you need to do it's pretty much you just you're always knowing what you got to do and you got to do it quick and move through your paintings with you know a good rapid um uh, pace so that you know you can get things done and things aren't drying on you and looking unpleasant and you know things like that so you'll learn as you go but i'm going to take a break i'll be right back we'll start our drawing and paintings okay be right back Okay, we're back from the break, and let's get uh, moving here. Let's get moving. 
Um, this is just my, my art table that I do my videos on. So what I did was I actually taped down my pad here so that it wouldn't move around while, we're, while we were taping our um, paper, watercolor paper, right? So I did that. Um, I tend to use now on my videos, I just take a sheet of um, uh, pencil drawing paper, like inexpensive paper. I guess it's called newsprint paper. Newsprint paper I, I bought. I think it's a Strathmore too. It's a Strathmore brand. So I can just tape down a new piece of paper on top of my table every couple videos and it stays nice and fresh and clean looking. So I use that now and it looks pretty good. And then maybe some of you are going to start creating your own videos eventually. Maybe you'll start your own YouTube channel and you'll do some of your own artwork on uh, YouTube. I'm sure some of you are going to do that eventually. So it, being that, um, being the case, I'm just going to kind of show you how I'm doing things here. So that's my art table. I've got the art paper on there now. Uh, I just have my camera on a um, stand over the top of the table here. So we have our paper here. Then I'm going to set up my palette. So I'll bring my palette over here. And then I'll just kind of center it in the camera. The thing is, we're only going to work on one side at a time on the painting. So let's do this. Let's try to get this in like that. Maybe I'll zoom in a little like that. All right, that looks good. Okay, perfect. And I'll cover this side with a piece of printer paper. This way, if we splash anything over here, it's not going to ruin our uh, other fresh piece of paper over here that we're going to work on next after this. Okay, so I'm going to take some printer paper and put it over here. Tape it on there. Just very haphazardly. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. I'm just going to tape it down so it doesn't move. So I'll just do one there. And then now essentially we're pretty much set up to draw and paint. And we have this protected over here, this side of the paper. I just have to tape this down a little better on this side over here. For this I usually use a little thicker tape. So I'll use a little thicker tape for this over here. And this is sort of off camera, but I'm just taping the this pad down so it doesn't move too much and I need to tape this down a little bit too. Okay, so we have that taped down. This is a little more we need. I always like to get everything really super sec secure when I'm doing videos, videos especially, or even painting. So whether you're painting or you're making a video too, if you're going to do some YouTube videos eventually, you want to tape everything really good and secure so that nothing slides around and moves around because that looks awful on camera when there's stuff sliding around it almost looks like you're on a ship and stuff's moving around and doesn't kind of not great for video so let me back this out just a little bit here i want to get that palette in there so we can see this all the mixtures that we're doing with the paints here And I'll take my palette down too as well, just a little bit, just so it doesn't slide around and move around. It's very important. So that we're going to do. I put two pieces of tape on my palette just so it doesn't move around too much. This is good and secure, you can see, so everything is nice and secure, taped down. And we're ready to uh, create some interesting paintings right now. We'll cover our brushes as we go. I'm going to use a uh, retractable pencil. So I'm going to use a number nine retractable pencil here. I think I'm just going to improvise um, here. Just a few things here. Okay, so 
This is going to be a portrait style. So again, we always just talk about quickly. We talk about when we're drawing and painting in watercolor. You can orient. You know, you can take your paper and a, and set it up in a landscape fashion like this, rectangular, horizontally like this. The long side uh, at the bottom and top, and the short side of the paper like this. So this is your landscape. landscape uh, view or you can set your painting up and do a portrait view like so and this is considered a portrait view so that's all we're just looking at these two which one are you going to use it depends on your painting what you're going to paint you can adjust it to your liking some people might like portrait view better some people might like landscape style maybe Maybe people like both the same. Probably this is the more preferred. Most people would probably choose this um, this setup on a painting versus the portrait view. But a lot of people like the portrait too. too. I would say maybe 60-40. Um, but I'd have to go back and look at my notes that I took years ago to kind of see. I think I did a little study on that years ago. And so let's get started here. Maybe we're just going to do a quick, maybe we'll do a beautiful like western scene, maybe out west somewhere, some mountains, some desert, just we'll have fun, we're going to have just a, we'll break down our paper in uh, simple terms, we'll just do maybe thirds, so we're going to do, um, we'll break the painting down into thirds, we have the top third, middle third, and bottom third, so here we have thirds, one third, one third, one third, and then we're going to um, use that as our game plan. I'm just going to improv here. I'm just going to make a, a level line here. This is going to be like the mountains in the background, like that. Then I'm going to have maybe a little, who knows, maybe there's a little lake over here on the left side, and then maybe there's some interesting Maybe there's a road, maybe there's a road coming into the scene like so, like that. And then maybe we're going to have some mountains back here. So this is going to be a nice, fun, kind of a landscape type painting. Some mountains in the background here. Maybe there's a small, small house over here in the distance there. You see a small house. We just create a little small house. Very simple. Nothing too fancy. We're just doing a house shape. Maybe just very simple. Two dimensions, not three dimensions. Two dimensions. We make the gable roof here in the bottom. And then we just make another roof here, like that, on the side. And that's it. And that's all that I have in that distant shape, which is a small house. So that's basically just the basic idea of that. Let me put a, put a door on there, a couple windows. Maybe a couple windows there, over here. Maybe we won't see those details like that on the windows, because it's very, very distant here, and they're very, very distant part of the picture but just it's there and I think that's really the main kind of detailed uh, subject matter we have here and it's we'll have some maybe we're going to do some uh, we're going to do some cactuses here a couple cactuses we're out west And to try to get a little more distance in the picture, I might make this a little smaller. So never feel like you can't just do a couple little bits of erasing to adjust something here. So I have another cactus over here, but I want to leave it in the distance smaller. Like that. 
one over here on the right hand side, a little larger. And we have some lines for the roadway and some grass and things over here. We'll have a little bit of brush and weeds and things here in the, fo in the foreground. We'll have a nice big beautiful western sky. We'll mix up some blues for that and some golds. We're going to have fun with our color mixtures here. And um, I think that's pretty good. Maybe we'll do another. Maybe we'll do another house over here. Maybe we'll just do a, a ranch like that. Okay, another. And again, this type of shape. Again, it's a ranch type house. And that's just. Maybe like that. Kind of a ranch house, maybe with a. Uh, maybe a, a door there and a couple windows. You don't have to put the doors and windows in if you don't want. And this might be like a shed roof. And this might be open back here. Maybe this is the back of the house, open patio with some roof over the top, like a nice covering over the roof, a canopy. So that's the other shape we were doing there, just to kind of draw that larger so you can kind of see what I did back here a little bit. Again, these are small little indications of things. Um, this one seems like it's too large, so I'm going to make this smaller. Again, don't feel like you can't change things. I'm going to change, and I'm improvising. That's why I'm doing a little more erasing. If I was drawing from a picture or a photograph, it might be easier. I might have nailed these quicker and but when you're doing improvising, which is great to do, and please do, please do lots of improvising. Sometimes when you're improvising, then you have to change a little bit. You have to maybe maybe do a little erasing. So here I made this too big. This house should be further in the distance than this over here. So that's why I'm making it uh, smaller like that. So this looks better now. This one looks a little bit larger, a little closer. Even though it's not a lot, it's still closer. This is a little bit more distant. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll make a... Maybe we'll do a... Uh, maybe we'll do a windmill. Here, uh, we'll do a windmill. A tower. Like that. And we'll just... Indications, don't don't try to draw this perfect if you can just get the basic gist of it. You can kind of see what I did there. My windmill is not not it's kind it's kind of small. Here. The windmill. It's basically just a little bit of a almost like a lighthouse with some X's in there. And then the wind. fans here for the wind and then a, and then a very skinny triangle like that so if you come up with something anything looking like this you're going to be fine and there you have it okay so now we have this and we're in really great shape we did our we did our drawing we've got our um, key subject matter in, in this picture we, we needed, we wanted to capture the feeling of a western scene, some ranches out here on the desert, a nice desert road with some rocks. We'll put some rocks in here and splash some desert sand in there, some distant desert mountains, a couple cactuses, a windmill. We have everything we need here and we're going to do a big beautiful sky with lots of water. So you're going to see how we're going to just do this real simply and again uh, the whole part of this is just have the whole thing of this is have fun with this don't stress over it i kind of showed you the drawings like uh simple drawings of the houses here and the um the, the windmill so you know those things there maybe you can practice it two or three times first you can draw that two or three times first practice a few of them first then you draw, draw in those that subject matter into your um, watercolor painting after you've drawn those a few times just to get yourself familiar with the shapes a little bit 
and the more you draw these shapes, like the more you draw houses or windmills or cactuses or whatever it is you're drawing, um, the more times you draw it, the better it'll be, the easier it'll be to draw it and draw it effectively and so that it looks good. So that's all you have to remember is repetition is the mother of skill. The more you repeat something in, you know, draw, in your drawing skills, the more you repeat something over and over, uh, the better it's going to look. So if you practice a hundred small houses like this one or this one and you do a hundred of each of these, after a hundred, drawing a hundred of these on a piece of scrap paper for maybe a, you know, couple to, you know, maybe a couple times a week, you draw five or ten at a time. After a couple weeks, you'll be pretty confident when you go to draw like a small house or ranch type uh, structure because you've done it so many times. You're, you're just going to go in there and do it. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Repetition, you know. The more we do something over and over, the easier it becomes and it gets locked into your mind and you, and you have a much easier time of just uh, doing it effectively. So let's continue to practice our drawing. Let's continue on with this painting. Let's start the painting process next. I just want to take a quick break and then we'll come right back and we'll uh, start painting. All right. Hey, we're getting back up to speed here. We're going to be doing our painting now. So let's... Um, take the approach of we're going to um, just take a pause for a minute here and think about, okay, how are we going to do our washes here? What what kind of method are we going to use for this painting? And I would say our best, me uh, best method here is going to be the glazing technique. So um, you'll hear me uh, talk about this all the time in, on my channel, the glazing technique and the alla prima technique. Alla prima would be we're going to go in and just maybe start doing the dark, uh, darkest darks in the painting. And then after we're done with the darkest darks, we'll, we go in and we do the lighter washes and maybe finish up with the very, very super light washes as we go. And we really don't necessarily have to let washes dry so much. We can kind of work through the painting all at one time. So if you're someone that likes to paint for like a half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour straight, and you don't really need to take breaks, let's say, a la primas maybe, it works good. So, but for this painting, the glazing technique is really the, you know, the real optimum way to paint this. And the reason I say that is because we're going to do a really beautiful watery sky and some really warm and cool colors everywhere, blue and gold in the sky. And then we're going to bring those colors down into the foreground for this. And then we're going to let that dry 100% and then go back in and do our dark details throughout this painting. So, um, the key to this is just we take a pause before we go in and start painting and just um, think about how, how we'd like to do this. You could try this in both methods. Maybe you could try this in uh, a la prima, which is just start in one place and just start painting with your, mostly your darks. And then you work around until finally you do your lighter washes last, maybe your sky washes last. Or we're going to do this here in the glazing technique and that's where we're going to start with our light washes, our really watery, really heavily um, uh, heav heavily watery, watery, you know, type washes on top of this paper as we go. First, let it dry, we could blow dry it, and then we come back and do our darker darks and do the, some of the details of this painting. So you'll see the glazing technique, you know, technique here um, and see how it works. It does work really well. And uh, again, we're going to work with our same brushes that we use on a consistent basis. We're not going with top of the line brushes, we're going to use some of these um, I have, uh, these are Princeton brushes, Princeton Art brushes, and I'm using a 5 8 flat brush here, so that's one brush I'd like to use for this painting. And also, I think I'm going to find um, a couple more that might look pretty good with this. Let's try... And then let's use the brush that we used, or the brush that came with the painting set. So this is a Prang set. Again, we don't have to spend $100 on a really expensive uh, packet of watercolor paints. The tube paints, we use this Oval 16. It's by Prang, Oval 16. And you can see here that we have plenty of great color. This is easy. You just open this up. Spritz a little water on there and you are ready to paint. No more fussing around, especially if you're a beginner and you're just starting out in watercolor. You really don't want the hassle of squeezing paints out into the palette with your tubes and 
that's a mess. It takes a lot of time. If you're just starting out, you want to keep it real simple. You just have one of these prang sets or something similar to this where you just open it up, spritz some water on there, and you're ready to go. And it doesn't cost a fortune either, which is great. Hey, <laughs> when I first started watercolor, I was doing the same thing too. I was trying to figure out, you know, I can't afford to, you know, spend $100 every time I go to the art store. So I was, you know, trying to save on some money and stick with a budget. And that I did. Then after a while, I started getting some more brushes and, you know, more expensive things. You know, I'd ask for things at Christmas time and at my birthday. So I'd get a, an expensive brush on my birthday from one of my family members or an expensive uh, palette from one of my uh, family members at Christmas time or whatever. So it's always uh, good. It takes time to build up some really good tools. For watercolor but you just do it a little bit at a time so now we're gonna have fresh clean water so this is fresh clean water and then we're just gonna add a bunch of water right onto the paper right here like this on the top portion of the sky it doesn't have to be a ton of water but you just want to get some water onto the paper and then I'm going to carefully bring it on down into the mountains, which is fine. Then once I get to the ground area, I just want to leave some lights where this road is here. So this little strip of roadway, I'm going to leave that white paper and I'm not going to actually add water to that. I'm going to let that just be. And I'm not going to actually add water over here either. I want to leave a light patch of like a seven. So if you can imagine, I'm leaving white paper and I'm not putting any water, water on it as I'm painting right now. So I'm adding water to both sides of this, but I'm leaving this open. Let me draw that quickly. So with this painting here, I'm just basically... Here's the mountains. Here's, the, here's our portrait. Here's the mountains. I'm wetting all this area up here of the sky and in the mountains. I'm wetting that with water, but I'm leaving a, a patch of like a set, like a, the number seven here, like so. I'm leaving this dry. I'm not putting any water here. And then I'm putting more water over here and over here too. So I'm just leaving like a seven or a T type shape there with paper with no water on it. I don't want to get any water on that part of the paper. And somehow I got a little bit of printer paper ink on my watercolor paper not a problem I can work with that it's kind of a tan color actually looks good let's leave it right in there that's gonna look nice with this painting because it's a desert painting so we like the desert colors tans and browns and stuff like that so again let's put some water up here in the sky we want to make this a real beautiful wet sky and then again some of that water into the mountain areas and over here on the right and the left and then we're just leaving that seven shape with no water on there and just leaving that white paper. And let's see how that works. Okay, now let's do some beautiful blue for the sky like that. That looks really good for the blue sky. Then maybe over here on the side, I'm just going to mix up some brown and some black. Just for maybe a little bit of a hint of a dark color in that sky some gold over here we're going to put some gold and some brown and some orange we'll make some it's going to be a golden color for the sand and then some green we want some green over here we want to make that a little more add some brown to your green to give it that more of a green Kind of a warmer feel, brown, maybe a little bit of gold and orange too in that brown, in that green. That looks like a pretty good kind of a green. All right, so those are our colors for the most part. And then maybe some, we'll put some red up here too. We're going to have a little bit of red and, and brown for like a burnt sienna color. So those of you that maybe watch my other videos and you know my other palette, sometimes I'll just refer to mixing a color. This is brown and a little bit of red and it kind of makes like a burnt sienna kind of look to it maybe a little more brown maybe some 
cadmium red. And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Okay, now, again, a little more water. All right, let's do our sky color. Let's start out with some gold up here. Some gold over here. Then let's get the blue. And we'll just let that flow down the paper. Look at how good that looks. Does that not look good? Look at that. We're just letting the water and the, and the paint do all the work. We're not doing much work here. We're just getting it on the paper. We pre-wet the paper again. You saw how we did that. There we go. And then uh, maybe we'll just take a little bit of dark here. And maybe add a little more of that blue. I want to get that a little darker because it dries lighter. Remember that watercolor always dries lighter. So if you can kind of put it on darker a little bit than you think it is, it'll wind up turning out good. If you go too sparingly, it's going to be too light of a color, a tone, a tonal value. So add in, don't be afraid, add in some of that darker dark and then I'm just adding in a touch of that black mixed with a little bit of brown. Just a little dark spot, maybe that's a little rain cloud up there, a happy rain cloud floating above. Now we're going to get in and do our golds and oranges here, like that. And then again, my I like that darker look, right? More, don't, the tonal values are a little darker here. I'm using more paint. Yellow, orange, brown. And I'm using some of that darker dark. A couple of splashes. And then a little more of that yellow here. A little bit of that lemony yellow here. Let's add a little bit of that. But I want to keep this kind of that seven shape looking good. Where that white paper is. And if you have to lift up Lift up a little bit of the water. You can see that water's kind of paper towel, like that. Then we could take our round brush that we have. We could take that round brush and we just carefully go in. Now that we're sort of, we've got the main colors on our paper, we're just going to look around and we're going to say the sunlight's coming from this direction. So we're just going to make sure we. I'm going to splash on some sand kind of a feel. So I'm just taking my brush, adding a little bit of this paint, this paint here, and just doing some splashing. If you see that if you find that there's an unpleasant looking mark on your paper, you can try to lift it a little. So I'm lifting up that a little bit of that, that dark spot that kind of flowed down the paper. You can gently lift that up with some paper towel or um, tissue just so that we get that kind of under control there. It didn't look so good. You know, kind of looked like a a uh, tornado or something. An odd looking tornado. <laughs> that did not look too good, I have to admit. So here we go. We're going to continue on and we're going to add some greens here for the mountains. So here I'm picking up those greens, and this really helps. Does this does this make sense? If you pre-mix your colors like we did here, you've already got it mixed. You've already got it mixed, so then when you put the water on the paper and you start working, it's a lot easier because you're kind of flowing and you you got everything working for you. you got all your colors already mixed. 
and then now you're just going back and forth, back and forth, and you've got everything under control. If you were to try to start mixing this once you put the pa water on the paper and you start painting, and then you're going in here and trying to figure out what colors you're going to mix, it'll never work that way. You have to really get your colors out first. Does that make sense? Get your colors out mixed up first here over this way on, the, on your palette. Then you start your painting, you add your water on, and then you just start using your water or your paints and bringing it over to your paper and adding it on here and getting it onto the paper. So that's exactly what we're doing. There's no real um, mystery to this. This is not rocket science. This is watercolors and if you just stick with the methods that we teach here on my channel, you're going to have a fun time with watercolors and I think you'll agree that if it's fun for you, you're going to keep painting, having a great time, and um, that's the main thing I want is everyone to continue painting because you can have such a great time with watercolor. You can take watercolors with you on vacation, you have a little scrapbook and a sketchbook with you, you bring it on vacation with your palette, you can do some paintings. It's great, you have a little memory, uh, sketchbook of memories of vacations or um, if you go and visit somewhere or if you just want to go out for a, any given weekend and go out and around where you live and do a couple little small paintings, you'll have so much fun with it. And, you know, not only are you painting and drawing all the time at home in your studio or in your place where you live, you know, you might be working at your kitchen table or in your, you know, on your uh, easy chair, <clears throat> you know, maybe in an office, home office or something, or maybe you're on the road a lot traveling and you're doing some stuff in your your room where you when you have some time whatever the case is I know everyone out there has different situations but the main thing is if you're having fun with it you can incorporate it and make it a part of your life and then it becomes much more meaningful and, and fun and you will be much more likely to keep painting and having a great time with it <clears throat> versus giving up on it and uh, so that's why I try to give you as much information as I can so here you can see I'm just adding in some warmer colors to the greens here in the mountains. And I think we're pretty much... And again, the less fussing you can do with this, the better it's going to look. So you can see I didn't do a lot of fussing around with things. I kind of got it on there good. I left some of that white paper. And what I think now is the best thing let's take a break and let this dry a little bit. You can see the paper's buckled and um, let's let this dry and then we're going to come in and do some details over the top of the dry paper. I'm going to use a blow dryer to blow, the, blow dry this off. This way it'll look so much better when we have dry paper to work on because if you start working with paints and darker paints now into this wet paint that you've just painted, it's going to blossom and bloom and cauliflower all over the place and, and, and you'll be tapping with your stuff and tissues and paper towels and it'll look terrible. So the main thing is if you can just get this done in two glazings. The first glazing, the lighter washes like we did here. You see how I did that? You see how I did this little dark cloud here? That looks pretty good. And then it's going to dry out, dry off a lot lighter. You'll see once we dry this off. And you let this dry, blow dry or let it dry for like a couple hours. And then you come back over and you do your final details of your distant houses here, your ranch. We'll do this um, uh, windmill, some of the uh, cactuses. We'll speckle on some more paint for the desert feel, a couple directional lines. You'll see it's going to look really phenomenal. And again, it's not that difficult. It's just really following the steps. So I'm hoping you're going to follow the steps here. It's real simple. Just remember, it's the light washes first, just like this and then let it 100% completely dry. And then next, right after this break, you'll see we're gonna go in and do those final details. And then it'll be it, that'll be the painting. And you'll have a gorgeous painting. You can put this in a frame if you want, or tack it up on the wall, or maybe give it as a gift to somebody, whatever you wanna do, that's fine. But uh, let's, let's take a break and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay, we're getting a... Uh back up to speed here. We took a break. We took a blow dryer. We dried off our painting. It was super wet. We used tons of water on this. We let that water flow down there. The colors, all the water and colors. Wow, it just flowed on down the paper. We made sure to leave our white paper in that seven shape, as you can see. 
We wanted to leave some of that white paper there so we didn't wet that part of the paper, but we wet the other sky areas, mountains. We wet the foreground here on both sides, but we, again, we left that bit of white paper for the ranch houses here and then that little bit of roadway here. So this way we have that nice little seven shape that looks really good. And um, now we're going to go in and do some darks to, come, to finish up our uh, painting here. And it looks really good so far. Now the key is not to go overboard with too much detail. Let's just sort of think things through here and say to ourselves, all right, we've got the majority of the watercolor on the paper. So once we have that kind of fact um, situated in our mind, now we can just say, all right, we need some darks some really dark darks, but we don't want to use much water at all. We actually don't want to use any water at all. We might just give this a spritz. Just a quick spritz there. And we're going to get some darks. And we already have a dark over here. We made this over here. This was a black, our black and some brown mixture. So that's going to be good. We have some red here too. Kind of like that nice, uh, kind of that clay red kind of look. So let's start working our colors in here our darks uh, let's do our let's start out with our um our tower here we have a a windmill like that and if you need to sometimes you can even incorporate a small sharpie pen or something to do some no one's going to see that. If you're doing some really dark darks, like with dark black paint, brown and black paint mixed, you won't see the Sharpie. You won't be able to tell the, the difference that I use a little bit of a Sharpie marker here, here. So do that sometimes. If you're painting and you see, wow, I can get away with using a little bit of Sharpie marker in this painting, do it. And um, here, we're just going to do some marks, like a, a wheel, a fan. The fan blades coming out and then we had that little shape like this so there I accomplished what I needed to with my sharpie marker so I didn't have to suffer through that with a brush that cannot get that kind of detail we need we need that really t fine detail right of those uh, steel cross members in this windmill now if we tried to go in there and do that with this paintbrush, I don't think we could accomplish it. It would look really messy and not look good at all. So that's why I try to have a little bit of a, a backup plan. So always know you can bust out your Sharpie marker and use it in a painting if, it, if it's going to work. And like I said, if you're mixing darks anyway, black and brown, really super darks, you can put this in your painting. No one's ever going to notice that. Okay, and then we'll put that red spot maybe here just to give it a little color. Maybe another little dab of red there, like that, just to give it a little excitement. And then we'll do some more, um, maybe some green and dark black and green, dark black and green. This black in this set is super dark. It is really just a touch of this dark black from this praying set here it really goes a long way so let's try this and let's get um, the dark black and red let's do our cactus here the cactus is a little more thicker so I can use this brush I just rest my hand on the paper so if you can imagine I got my hand on the paper like that resting and then I just move the brush like that up and again, you have to practice these uh, techniques a little bit to get used to them, or the more you paint, the better it's going to, easier it's going to go for you. Then you can lift up some paint here and there like that. Sometimes it's good to lift up a little bit of paint. It gives like a little feeling of light. And there's uh, light coming from here. Maybe a little shadow going back there. Like that, so you can add some shadows. I'll do that there. Some splashes with that dark paint too. And again, I'm really going to go minimal with this here. I'm not going to go a lot with these details. Again, it's going to really, that's the key is holding back sometimes and not doing as much. That really can uh, make your paintings look absolutely phenomenal. Too many details can really ruin things. 
So I'm just going to do this, add some more green to these hills, just like that. And there's some darker hills here. So I'm just flicking on the paint there, I'm getting it on. And I'm going around this ranch house here. You can see. Like that. And you can lift up a little bit of paint there if you need to, or here and there. I'm trying to get some of those mountains in the background kind of undulating back there. Then we can go with some of that darker paint around this area. Some green. Some green. Some green and maybe some brown. So sometimes you just mix up a little bit of paint here and there. So that's a little bit of the green there around this area. There's some maybe some trees and so forth. And I think we're getting a little bit of a power surge here. My lights are flickering. I think there's a solar flare going on right now from the sun. So we have to cope with that. And again, some more splashes. And we could add a little door maybe, a happy door on this little house here. Maybe another door on this ranch house couple windows. We can maybe shape out this roof a little better. Like that. A couple bushes there. And again you want to go very sparingly with details. Maybe a little bit of blue over here. That lemon yellow. I'll put a little bit of that lemon yellow here. A little bit of the gold color. Okay. I think that's good for the um, for these distant hills. I think we have it. We don't want to go again. Too much details can really cause a problem. There we go. And uh, maybe a little bit of gold on this roof, like that. Maybe a little bit of gold over here on this side. There we go. And you can see very sp sparingly details. And then now maybe we're going to take some red and we're just going to have maybe a couple of a couple of uh, marks here on the paper. A couple of weeds like that. Again, use these very sparingly. Maybe splash on some, uh, very lightly splash on over here in the foreground for the uh, sand and that sand type of feel. And there's a little bit of, there's some, maybe a dark or two over here. Once this dries a little bit, you might be able to scratch out a couple lights. This is always good to do. Some uh, directional lines. Finger painting a little bit. You just take your finger and drag it across the paper. You could add some greens to this in the foreground. Just a little bit of color.
scratch out a few lights like that with your thumbnail or you can use a um, anything you might have that you think like the sometimes I, I use uh, chopsticks I have chopsticks that I use all the time I use them to uh, do some scratch marks so I just have a chopstick and then I use a small knife and I just make a little point on it so you can make some really nice details like that for yourself some highlights like so and I think that's good I think we really have gotten all the detail we want to get in there we don't want to again go overboard too much detail will ruin a painting that is for certain so always remember you can always go back in a day or two later and think to yourself oh maybe I'll add something later better to tell yourself you're gonna add in things later but stop short of finishing your painting versus keep adding things in then it's too much stuff in the painting and it looks distracting so you can kind of see I didn't do much detail here I did enough that so let's peel off our tape take a look and we're going to do another painting just in a few minutes. We're going to continue on with this. But we just wanted to get our first painting done here and see how this looks. And certainly this looks really nice. It looks pleasant. It looks like a positive, pleasant painting. Tons of beautiful water uh, washes. That really gorgeous um, signature look of a watercolor with tons of water on there. And... A gorgeous scene a desert scene here we got beautiful desert houses some ranches and we have ourselves a windmill and a couple we have a nice looking cactus there and some brush and weeds in the foregrounds here we scratch out a few lights when we paint over that dark paint then we scratch out a few lights after it sits for about a minute 30 to 60 seconds so you can scratch out a few lights like that and I think that really looks good. You can always sometimes too do a little bit of um, finger painting. You can blend out some stuff if it looks too. I, I kind of I went over onto my edge here on my where I taped this off, but that's okay. We put a mat over the top of this anyway. Um, to finish it off and put it in a frame. So if it comes out really good, everybody, put a mat on it and frame it. Why not? Set it up in your house, maybe give it as a gift, whatever. All right, so we're done with our first painting here. I think it looks really good. I'm, think, I'm thinking you're agreeing with me. It looks really good. And I'm sure you've done a great job completing this painting as well. And uh, I'm sure you'll try it again even. Maybe two or three times you'll, you'll work on this to get the right effects and the right look you need. And um, we'll start with another painting in just a few minutes. I'm going to take a break and we'll come right back. We'll clean up our palette and we'll start with a new painting. Maybe we'll do something a little different. Maybe a shore scene or some flowers. Uh, I'm going to think about it when I take my break and we'll come back and start another one. Okay, we just changed our setup. So now we're going to do our second painting. We're just going to do a real simple uh, flower uh, arrangement in a flower pot. We'll keep it real simple. We worked really hard on our first painting so that, uh, you know, that um, uh, desert scape scene that we painted, you know, that was, that took us a lot of time. We went through a lot of um, different methods and procedures. Let's keep this a more simple painting right now. So we'll kind of um, start out with just a, a simple idea. Maybe we'll have a table about uh, one third up. We'll have a table across here. I'll just make a line and I'm using the other side of the paper we started out with the um, one side of our paper where we did our um, desert scape uh, western style uh, landscape painting over here and now we're going to use the other side that we already had pre-taped maybe I just need to um, tape down my uh, palette here which I did not do let's do that so Sometimes it's good not to overwork and do too much, you know. Um, maybe maybe at times we'll do a more difficult, challenging painting, and then we can then change it up and do more of a simple painting. Um, paintings actually take a lot of energy to concentrate and focus on all of the different... Uh, methods and techniques and processes we're using. It definitely 
um, uses energy and it can make us tired actually, you know. If we're painting two or three paintings in a day, you know, we'll feel tired after that actually from all that concentrating and all the effort we put in. So we did a lot of effort on that first painting. This one here will go a little bit uh, less uh, intensive. Let's do this here. We'll get our, we're just going to do a simple vase um, with some flowers in there. Let's try this. We're going to make a, try to fill up our subject matter here in our rectangle. So here we're working within this rectangle, this space right here. Let's make sure we fill it up with subject matter. We wouldn't want to draw, you wouldn't want, want to draw now a, a, a vase like this size with flowers in it. You know, that would look really unpleasant. And when we have all this space here, let's use up this space and get some Um, good amount of subject matter in our picture frame, our rectangle, and I'm going to just tape this down a little more too as well. There we go, just want to tape that down a little bit more. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm just going to go up and I'm going to do this. I'm going to contour draw, which means I'm just going to start in one spot and then just continually draw as I go. And just I'm going to try to do some flower shapes over here. So I'm just trying to follow the picture on the, in front of me. It's a picture I really can't put online because it um, has a copyright claim on it. So I really can't put it in my video. So it's best too if you can work from my finished painting. So here I'm just working around this. There we go, and we're okay. There we have it a simple vase, some flowers. more stems and leaf forms here. I think that looks pretty good. A little bit of a shadow underneath the vase here. Lights coming from over here. We'll make, we'll make our insignia up here. So the lights coming from here. Okay, looks good. Maybe we'll just erase a few lines here and there if we want, just to. And we're ready to paint. And I think we're gonna maybe we'll use our Simmons here. We have a number six Simmons round brush, and this is a, a synthetic brush. And again, when you're starting out, this is you know extreme beginners series, and so you're probably brand new at drawing and painting in watercolor. So you're not gonna go out and be buying a hundred dollar brush and for watercolors, you're starting out, you have some simple brushes, um, inexpensive paper, inexpensive palettes. These happen to work great too, these um, Prang palettes. But the, the key is, you know, 
when you're starting out in the beginning, you know, you might decide you want to do oil painting for some reason. You know, you might decide you're going to do sculpture and you don't really want to work with drawing and painting. That's fine. Everyone is different. Sometimes in, in your art uh, endeavors, you might decide you want to change up and do something different, maybe pastels. There's so many different things you can really get interested in and learn about uh, with art, photography. You know, there's just so many. So always remember, keep your options open. Don't feel you're locked into something. Maybe it may not be for you, painting, drawing and painting in watercolor. I think most of you can do it, and most of you would actually do really well at it. But you have to, you know, really have that you know, have that uh, really desire for it, that excitement about it. And if, if you feel that little bit of magic and excitement, then you just keep going and keep going. You, and then eventually you'll start to pick up more and whatever. But, you know, in the beginning you start off humble and uh, minimal things. You don't have to invest too much in it. And uh, so I'm ready to go here. I got my brush we're going to use, some fresh water in our water pail. And then this here we're going to do a la prima. We'll paint this all at the same time. We're not really going to do any glazings. The first painting we did the glazing technique, recall. We did the whole painting in a light wash. Then we went over with our subsequent darker washes. This we're going to do a la prima, which means we're just going to go in and start painting uh, and probably starting with more of the darker colors, the darker tonal values, and then work out and then and finish up with some lighter uh, tonal values in the painting. So I'm going to go with some uh, let's see, we're going to use some purple and some red. So I'm going to try to mix a little bit of a light pink color for some pink flowers, light pink flowers, with a little bit of purple in there. Put some purple up here. We're going to keep this a light painting too. It's going to be very light. We're not going to probably be going in and doing a lot of darks in here. Some, but not, not too many. Okay, so we've got that pink. Looks good. Maybe for the vase we'll use some orange and gold. Yellow and orange. Maybe a little touch of red too. Maybe a little bit of uh, some greens. So we'll just mix up some greens over here. We can... a little bit of... Um, brown mixed in with our greens, a little bit of orange maybe. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to get my uh, apron on. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to start and we'll just have a fun time and get some colors going here. And again, maybe some more of that green up there with some gold, gold and green, yellow and green. That looks pretty good. Maybe some blue. Okay. Okay, I'll do a, a leaf form here, and another maybe over here. And another leaf form over here. So I'm kind of doing some of these dark leaf forms first as I start out in the bottom of the, the vase here. And Some yellow in there too. Have fun, just get some of those dark green leaf forms in there. Maybe some of that orange, or we're going to start going in and doing some of that orange color for the vase. A little bit of shadowing in there. 
So I'm doing the shadow color underneath the green leaf forms for the vase. Light's coming from this direction, so quite a bit of um, shadow under there. And then we're going to just do some orange and uh, dark orange, light orange. We'll make this vase colorful. Then we'll do a shadow color, maybe some purple. Maybe mix in a little bit of brown with the purple. A little bit of the orange too. And there we have it. A good definite shadow there for the um, vase. And then as it project, proj projects outwards, where the other flowers are, we just make it a little lighter. More water, less dark. We don't want it as dark now. We kind of have the, the vase of flowers, like so. Like that. And then we can go back in and add a little bit of that purple for the darker area here. It's a little darker next to the vase. Then it starts to get lighter as it, the shadows move outwards. They get lighter. And then again here we'll add some more of that purple straight out of the paint pan here. I'm not mixing any water into this, just straight paint. Want to get some shadow under there. And I think the key with this is colors. We're really excited about the colors here. Aren't the colors great? Wow, look at that. We're mixing all the colors together. You can mix them a little different if you want. I'm going to splash a little bit of the pink color in there. Same thing in the vase. And then I'm going to start doing some of those pink flowers here. So I'm going to try to make a pink color with some red and a touch of that lavender type color there. There we go. Uh, I'm going to leave some room. We will be painting in some of these stems and leaf forms. Maybe some of that purple over here. A little bit of splashing. And the key is to just have fun with this. Mix up the mix up the colors, you know. Let's not just take one color like this here and just take this all and just start filling in the whole let's filling in the whole bouquet let's take some of this color here and there leave some white paper in there don't fill it all in please 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 leave white paper um, in your bouquet I'm making small flower shapes petals I should say petal shapes here and there And then at the top of the flowers, I want them to be lighter. So I'm going to use lighter washes there and here and there. Okay, so I left a lot of white paper. Let's go back in and get some of our greens. Plenty of greens all mixed around here. And we'll start doing some greens here and there. Just kind of mix them in. Follow the pencil drawing we did. So we did some of that pencil drawing. Very important to get that pencil drawing in, right? This way you have a, like a blueprint for yourself underneath as you're painting. Then you can kind of say, all right, I got to make sure I stick with my game plan here. So I'll do some more of these green flower shapes and then this one here maybe I'll go you can just go off and grab one another green color here maybe I'll just dip into that and see what happens look at that wow nice it's a lighter green see that so we want to kind of modulate your colors change your colors as you go 
we want to avoid that like just using one color and painting and painting and painting and painting with one color you, you can see how we're, it's really good we'll mix we, we get our colors out on the palette first so you saw how I we started out we got some colors some greens with browns some greens up here with some oranges we use some straight paint right out of the palette to um, get some really bright greens um, we mixed all the purples and oranges and yellows and here for the vase so I'm constantly trying to um, use the whole enchilada here right let's use the whole gamut of colors here in our palette if we can let's use a lot of them warm and cool warm and cool we want to always have that mantra warm and cool warm and cool we just wouldn't want to make this all a purple vase purple flowers purple shadows next thing you know all we have is purple that would not look good at all what makes this look exciting is all the mixtures of colors and that's what all you have to remember use plenty of color you can't go wrong with using too much color you know especially in the beginning have fun just use lots of colors get them out there on the palette mix them out look at them say yeah that looks pretty good the greens are for the leaves and the twigs and things like that right and uh, leaf forms we do that and then we have our purples and pinks here and some purples and pinks here for our flowers and then our vase was purples and oranges and reds and purples here with a little bit of um, brown mixed in there for our shadows like so and then voila look at this we already have everything 90 percent complete and again this is the a la prima you can see we just went and got in here and just went for it we painted the whole picture now we're pretty much 100 percent done here only thing left we have to do is um maybe we'll do a little bit of um uh splashing for our flowers just a little more i like to add a little bit of splashing it kind of gives it like a light feel a feeling of lightness like there's some baby breath in there some other light um intricate flowers and and uh plant material and then um, over here on the side we can get some red and orange maybe make a little bit of a color color behind the table so we're pretending that this is our table here a white table and then behind the white table we have a wall and let's just say this wall is mixed with some mixtures of the colors we already used and that's all we have to do add a little bit of that mixture we already used any of the colors probably good to just mix a little bit of everything in there like that a little bit of splashing rinse off the brush dry off the brush a little bit on a, a tissue or a paper towel so if i take a paper towel i rinse my brush off dry off some of the water on a paper towel or tissue and then just lightly lightly blend in the wash we just put on here so that it kind of fades up real lightly into the white paper so this paper has lots of this painting has lots of white paper in it you know we could splash around a little more warmth maybe some orange in here just scrub on a little bit of orange maybe that looks really good that kind of warm feeling so the wall behind the flowers is like a warm maybe cool too we'll put some purple in there so some warm orange wash just lightly damp brush not too much water just scrub in a little bit of very so much light touch of orange and maybe some of that red that's mixed in a couple splashes maybe some cool some purple so then we'll take a little bit of coolness and use a purple a couple splashes of purple maybe a little damp brush to move some of that purple around a little bit so we have a wall here with some uh, some texture to it and we can go in and get some purple here if there's too much water floating on your paper you can lift it up like that with a paper towel that works really effectively a paper towel you just dip the edge of the paper edge of the paper towel right where the puddle is and that puddle will just come right up 
and then you can get more of your desired color in there. So I want to add a little powerful accent of purple there and maybe a little bit of maybe red orange over here too like that. Then maybe a little green mixed in there like that. Same here a little bit of green so I'm just kind of dabbing that in. Maybe a little bit of yellow with that purple. And that will really make a good crisp edge along the back of that table. And I think that's, let's call this finished. This is a really beautiful flower painting. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we kept this one light, fresh, quick. We, we didn't spend a ton of time on this, but you can see you can get a really beautiful, you know, f flower painting done pretty quickly using some real beautiful techniques, you know, just the a la prima technique. You're going in, you're starting, um, you know, with a preset mix of colors you have in your palette already ready to go. So you're not trying to work and mix and work and mix. You get everything out on your palette. For the most part, you try to get most of what you need out on your palette. And then you start working from that. Then as you go, you can go straight into your paints without using any of this here because you're essentially using the same colors all the time. So you don't get too worried with your colors and what to use because you kind of just know okay I want a darker purple maybe for my flowers over here maybe in a spot or two well you can do that you can go straight into that purple paint right there and do a couple little spots of uh, purple and then soften it rinse the brush off damp brush dry off some of the water and then you can kind of soften that up a little bit if you want, like so. So you can do a little bit of adding some bits of uh, interesting darks and lights here and there. So you can do that too, just to maybe do a few different um, more exciting bursts of color if you want to do that, that's fine. Once you kind of have everything in there the way you like it, then there's no reason why you can't add a couple of those little, ex ex you know, accentuate things a little bit with a little more powerful color in there, which is, which is just your straight paint right out of your pans and not so much using some of this, which we've already mixed, and it's very light. It's not strong this is a much more can you see how that's a darker tonal value that's how you get your darks you're just going in and grabbing it right from your pan from your from your uh, wells your your paint wells that's how you get the darks and if you need the lighter washes you're going in and mixing them here and adding a little water to it to get your lighter washes like those over here uh, in the um, on the wall here That's about it. I hope you had a great time here. Again, thanks so much for coming by. So happy that you are coming along on this great journey. We're doing the beginners, extreme beginner series right now, which is we're starting out in the beginning, kind of just going over the basics of all that you need to get started with watercolors, your tools, your brushes, your pencils, your paint, your palette, your paper, and then just your straightforward paintings and drawings and paintings of just, you know, things that are more simplified where we can work here and effectively kind of go over everything as we go and then you can just go ahead and repeat this process two or three times uh, at your own leisure and you'll turn out um, beautiful paintings like this you know a nice simple flower arrangement in a vase on a table and uh, and that's really very simple but yet it's still very beautiful very colorful has a nice uh, feel to it a nice light um, good feeling of it so we'll see you on the next video everyone again thanks for coming by thanks for subscribing and uh, we'll see you soon bye bye